Get ready for an android attack. This is your look at the new NECA Toys Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, The Wrath of Krang. Brains plus brawn make a calamitous combination in Krang's evil android body. The evil warlord from Dimension X has been banished to Earth, living deep underground in his terrifying Technodrome. This mechanical monstrosity has real rampaging robot power, just don't call him when he's in the shower. The bald, bad-bellied behemoth includes a brand new Krang figure, baby shredder minifigure, 12 interchangeable hands and arm attachments and loads more. Before we start tackling new turtle toys, the first thing we're going to want to do is figure out how tall Android Krang stands. I'd like to thank the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of Krang that we're having a look at in this review. Krang should be available right now in retail stores and online, should you wish to add this one to your collection. Impressively, Krang stands at 9 inches exactly. That's from the foot to the top antenna. And that translates to a figure that's also 23 centimeters in height. Getting some size comparisons in, obviously the one I'm sure you guys will want to see the most is Android Krang compared to his former self, or at least the mechanized Krang that we looked at before. Now one thing that's interesting about the mechanized Krang, this one right here, is that you can actually take the Krang that comes inside the belly of the Android and you can actually put it inside. Well, I'll show you guys that in a second. Didn't want to spoil it so quickly, but yes, you can swap the Krangs around. I'll do some comparisons of that in a second. Other comparisons we can obviously make is uh, bring in Shredder. Obviously, you guys will want to see what he looks like next to Shredder. And uh, we can bring in like a foot soldier. Just kind of give you guys, again, a comparison. And why not? Let's bring in Bebop. I don't know where my rock steady is. He must have just wandered off doing something else for the time being. And uh, we'll bring in a couple of turtle toys. Bring in Michelangelo. Bring in Raphael. Let's not block everything. And just recently, we also had a look at Baxter Fly. And we also just recently had a look at Splinter to kind of give you guys a good, robust idea of how much taller Android Krang is versus some of the many, many turtle figures that we've looked at before. Looking at the accessories that come included with Krang, and again, NECA outdoes itself by not only giving us cool swappable options for the Android body, but also giving us episode-specific accessories. And I love the fact that they actually do that. Having a look at some smaller things for the time being, a couple of trinkets, schematics, if you will. I don't use the word schematics nearly enough in reviews, but you get two of them. They're just all, you know, just paper blueprints. One of them happens to be the Android body itself. At the top corner, in case you didn't know, it says Krang's Android body. He's not hiding it from anybody. But rather nice little Easter egg as well, as they include blueprints or schematics for the original Playmate's knucklehead. I love the fact that they would even included that. As it stands right now, I don't really have a place necessarily to put these. I suppose if I put the figures on display, I could probably just mount these behind Krang until hopefully the inevitable release, I'm hoping it's an inevitable release, of a diorama playset. I mentioned this before when we had a look at the Splinter and Baxter. The idea of just giving us a back, a sides, sides on either side, and of course the bottom, just giving us dioramas, one of the sewer playset. And of course what comes to mind is when I'm looking at the Android Krang is a backdrop of the, like the Dimension X control room. It doesn't have to be the entire uh, Technodrome, but just to give us the background, the sides, the back, and the bottom, something that you could display the figures on, I think that would be a fun touch. And maybe down the road, we may find ourselves seeing that from NECA Toys. In the meantime, other things he comes included with. I want to look at this one next, because it's adorable, the fact that we get ourselves a little baby shredder. Again, episode specific. You can see the face, the look on his face. I don't know if he's just, he got himself a boo-boo. Maybe he needs a bit of a band-aid. I don't know. But again, to give you guys an idea, picking him up from the side, here's this regular uh, shredder, just to get, so you guys can see the difference between the two. You know, actually, the coloring here on Baby Shredder, so quickly wanted to say Splinter, but Baby Shredder here is actually a little bit more closer to his cartoon counterpart, the slightly more darker skin. If you compare it, actually, to the way that we got uh, Shredder before, there I'm going almost slipping with Splinter. If you got look at this one before, the skin is definitely a lighter color. So maybe we do get ourselves a re-release of this guy down the road with maybe a brand new um, Krang body. That would be a nice touch. Like giving us that re-release Krang from this body inside the mechanized suit. 
and maybe give us a, an upgraded shredder with closer colors to baby shredder i think would be a nice touch because it definitely seems like he's a little more closer to like this in the cartoon anyways we'll move shredder out of the way this one it actually rather imp impressed me and surprised me because it actually does have articulation i just figured if anything it probably would be maybe arms if anything yeah why not but in actual fact, Jack, if I can call you Jack, his head rotates back and forth. It has a nice ball joint going for it. His arms have it, their own hinge joints. You can rotate those, well, hinge those out, and you can also rotate those back and forth. And he does also have somewhat of an ab crunch. It's kind of closer being to his knees. I guess you can consider that a knee crunch, but just a little adorable looking shredder. You can see on the undersides of his feet. It doesn't have peg holes provided for, say, a display stand. But you don't really necessarily need him. He stands perfectly fine on his own. Love the fact he comes included with that. Uh, one other thing he comes included with, again, going back to the idea of not disturbing him in the shower, is he does actually have things available that you can display the figure in shower outfit. Well, more specifically, he comes included with like a towel. A towel I could best probably describe as being like a very thick chamois. You ever had a chamois for wiping away your car or you get those expensive paper towels, the ones that are advertised as you never need to buy another roll of paper towels. You know, those ones you wring out and then you reuse. I mean, that that's the kind of material that you essentially get here with Krang serving, of course, as his towel. Uh, pick up the figure, for example, we'll just move his arms up quickly showing you guys. I'm sure many of you know how to put a towel on, but uh, you just basically just wrap it around his body and then just sort of pinch it or tuck it underneath. Not to the point where it covers Krang's face completely, but more than enough that it stays perfectly in place. And he comes with other couple of cool things as well. Let's just get him to stand perfectly fine. He also comes with a piece that can go over top of his head. I'll show you guys that also in a second. And he also comes included with a soap on a rope. Yes, Krang, Android Krang comes with a soap on the rope. And boy, that's a nice little accessory to come included with. You got some nice black panel lining done to the outer edges or at least the sides of the soap. And then you've got like the rope that's attaching the soap on either side here. So let me show you how it works with the soap on the rope. You're literally just going to take it, slide it down his head like that. You actually don't even need to remove the antenna on the end of his head. However, you will have to do it right now. Just wiggle this off like that and pop it off out of place to go ahead and then put this part on instead now when you are putting this in place there is still a hole you can see that goes straight through when you are putting it in place you could opt for yourself to then go ahead and put the antenna back in place if you want to or you can go ahead and just leave it off i prefer to have it in place but i mean again it's entirely up to you you could leave it off completely if you really wanted to just make sure you don't lose these antennas one good thing is that NECA gives you more than one of these. They give you two. So if you do lose one, just pop this one in place quickly before I move on to my train of thought. But they do give you two of these. So if you lose one, you have a second one. There's no difference between them. It's just the fact that they give you a secondary one just in case. So that's what you can do if you want to put them in shower mode. The only thing I would say is like for the towel end of it, I mean, short of it just being pinched on the front, there's really nothing else in place that holds the towel. I guess they could take a little bit of Velcro, like double-sided Velcro tape, put some on the inside on one, put some on the other side here and just, you know, attach it like that. Or you could even make it closer to a towel, put the Velcro on the inside and then just tuck it down and then have the Velcro hold it in place. Because if not for that, it's really only just to the matter of the pinching that keeps the towel from falling off. And nobody wants to see Krang with the towel falling off. The rest of Crane's accessories are all centered basically around the things that go into the sockets of his forearms. For example, he comes included with a battle axe. The battle axe has some nice paint shadowed on one side and reflective light painted on the other. And they basically all peg in the exact same way. What you need to do is just go ahead and pick the figure up. Decide which hand you decide you want to go and remove. You can really either use either side. But I'm going to go ahead and grab it on this side. Just wiggle the hand off. Anyone who's collected NECA figures for long enough, you already know how easy that is to do. And then you just go ahead and take the battle axe, in this case, and just wiggle it in place. The thing that works in your aid is really to wiggle it when you're pushing it in. Don't simply just want to push it in. Uh, it's not so much the issue when it comes to the battle axe, but you'll see in a second things like his, well, for example, like his ball and chains. When we go right to that next, 
These are things that, of course, as you can see, have real working chains, and the pegs that attach to the sockets work the exact same way. Big giant spiked balls painted nicely in silver with the center ball all in a more darker kind of gunmetal gray. I have seen some issues where the end peg was missing, but it seems to be the case on mine that the pegs are perfectly intact. I suppose if you had cases where you had one that was removed and missing on the end of it, you'd probably just reach out to NECA and see if you could get a replacement. But these ones are ones you may wanna be a little bit more careful with. I'm gonna go ahead and again, pick up the figure and you'll see right away how quickly you can interchange and swap out Krang until you get the desired look that you want. But for the ball or the chain, ball chain here and the big spiked ball, it works the same way. You're just gonna plug this in place. But when you are pulling it out, be careful just to hold on to this. Obviously don't pull it from here. Just hold it to where it actually plugs in place. And again, don't pull it, twist it as you're removing it and it comes off perfectly fine. The only thing that's really left behind, I've noticed is a little bit of red paint. Not red paint necessarily from the ball and chain, but more so the red paint from the hand that used to be, of course, in that place. Uh, the other thing he comes included with, we'll just put the figure down here. He comes with a rotary blade, which actually does spin. It gets afforded a little bit of additional color. Nice blue spikes make up the outer, the outer blade that spins around. And again, that plugs in the exact same way. Just, to, just again, show you. Just wiggle, pop it in. And again, when you are putting in place, very much hold on to the forearm just to make it so that the hand doesn't swing away or the arm doesn't swing away on you. And just wiggle that in place. And you have yourself the rotary blade. I started the review actually with the blades. I'm not really sure what I would end up settling with. Perhaps I may decide to settle in with these hand lasers, these little blasters that can be replaced in instead of, again, his hands. I do like these ones quite a bit, again, because you got that extra blue that's been brought into place here with a little bit of red there on the ends. Again, to swap those out, you already know it by now, the drill. It'd be funny if actually I said that and he had a drill for an attachment. But again, just works the exact same way. Wiggle that off. Don't pull it off as hard as you can. And then find the appropriate ones that you want to use and wiggle and just pop them back into place. There you go. The only thing he doesn't come included with, and I seem to recall in the in the first episode where he actually had the android body, I think he actually had wings to escape. Shredder leapt onto him and then he had these big giant wings that allowed him to escape. In a way, for cartoon accuracies, it would have been neat if they actually included those wings. But I mean, really, ultimately, I would never display my Krang with wings anyways. I'm just saying it from my own personal desire, just to see all the cool accessories that they possibly could have included with them. And of course, Krang's going to come with a whole series of interchangeable hands. And because I've made such the mess of taking out the hands from the sockets, I'm literally left with every single hand he comes included with in my hand, which gives us a total of six. We'll go through those right now. He comes with a couple of different gripping hands, and the grip does vary. He comes with these ones, which almost looks like he's sprinkling on salt in a soup that he's making. The only thing I could really come up with as a reasoning for why he comes with specifically these hands is possibly for the blueprints, but they just barely fit in there. Or you could also take the soap on the rope, for example, and you can feed the soap on the rope in between the pointer and the thumb, and he, he can actually hold it. Well, you can get it in a little bit more than what I just did. I'm not really sure what other reason and purpose he would actually have for these specific sprinkling seasoning hands. That's what I'm going to go ahead and call them. He comes also with a pair of gripping hands, slightly more wider gripped hands, but he doesn't come with technically anything else to really hold. And he comes with more exaggerated gestured or dynamic hands, which has the wider hand, which the more spread out fingers. Over the course of this review, I'm sure so far you've seen little fragments of red starting to appear on my own hand. I assure you it's not blood. What it is, is actually paint that's flaked off. Um, even though they seem to have used red pegs to connect the hands, of course, to the actual sockets, it looks like they've still managed to paint over top of it. So every single time I've removed a hand, I've either done one of two things. I've left red in the sockets of the forearms, or I've left red crumbled paint all over my hands. Again, it's just a simple fix of just wiping that away, but uh, I'm not really sure why they had to paint the peg because it seems to be the exact same color as the actual rest of his hands. Uh, one other thing that would have been fun to, to see this guy come included with is a pair of flesh tone hands. Because we've seen a couple of instances where he actually has flesh tone hands and not necessarily the red hands. I mean, they could have given us maybe a 
even just one extra pair of the same color of hands that he comes for the rest of his body. So those are all in a nutshell, all the accessories that of course come include with Krang, excluding of course the most important accessory, and that is Krang that's sitting inside of his stomach. Now, to get a closer look at Krang, we're obviously going to have to remove Krang. Now, it's not simply just a case where you have to go in there and feed and pull him out. It may be easy to get him out, but it may be a little bit more problematic to get him back in. NECA actually came up with a solvable solution for that problem. What you have to do is just bring the arms up. You don't have to bring the arms up, but I'm just bringing the arms up just so they're out of the way. And you really need to just take one section of it. It'll make more sense in a second. And you just pry it away from the body. You'll find one side seems to work a little bit easier than the other, but all you're literally just doing is prying it away from the body. You'll see like there's a little tab point right there. Once you free one of the tabs from the sunken groove on the side of his body, then it's simply just a case of taking the other half and just popping it off. That's it. That's all you needed to do. Go ahead and pull Krang out for the time being. And then just going back to it, this is the inner workings of his body. You can see that it almost looks like a little makeshift keyboard. And a nice little touch on their part is they actually gave him real working joysticks. I wasn't expecting at all to see real working joysticks. And yet the proof is in the pudding or the proof in this case is in the joysticks. But all it is, is uh, this, bo this bottom part is still firmly attached. So it still will rely on the articulation point when you, it comes to rotating his body. But when it comes to attaching this back into place, you have a little groove, a little tab on the one side, on the front side. And you have little tabs on either side right there. See these little ledges of plastic? Literally, when it comes to putting him back in place, I find just putting him in on an angle so that tab lines up to the groove like that. And then when you are putting him down on the other side, you're all you really have to do is sort of, I'm going to demonstrate with my hand. You're just literally kind of pulling, pushing it out this way. If that makes any sense. So line it up into the first groove. Don't have to worry about the front just yet. And then just pry this out. See how I pushed it out a little bit and pry it out just enough that you can then land the second little uh, ledge here and line it up with that tab. And then from there, you just need to plug the front end. Just make sure everything's sort of plugged properly in place. And that's all you really need to do. Simple solution to the problem. Because the only other thing you could have probably done is just find your way to finagle Crane in there, but literally Crane will not fit. He's just, is too, too tight quarters and he's too large of a brain to be able to fit in that compartment. Very smart on their part by devising this way of removing it while still remaining a fully functional figure that you can have on display. And of course, when it comes to his posability, it doesn't limit at all his posability. Let's get a closer look at Crane now. Now, this is a slight upgrade crank from the one that we'd gotten before. And you don't think it is really until you bring in the other one and then you realize immediately how much better this crank was versus the original release. Let's go ahead and take him out. I'm going to remove him from the cockpit. And while we're also at it, we can go ahead and remove the hands. Just they attach obviously by ball joints. Unplug it on the other side and we're left just with his mechanical, I don't know what you would call it, mechanical cockpit. And we'll go ahead and just pop those back in place just for the time being so I don't go ahead and lose the arms. Plug it in on one side, plug it in on the other side, and then giving you guys an idea of just how vastly better the newer Krang is versus the original release. And I was fine for the original release of Krang. I thought he looked good. But you definitely have to admit, there's a lot more sizing that's gone into the newer released Krang. And I think it looks vastly better than this one right here. If you are also curious, maybe you are, maybe you're not. You can go ahead and remove the arms from this Krang, the one that, of course, comes included with the Android body. And yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, but no, you can actually take Krang. He's a little more tighter quartered, yes, but you can actually get him inside a little mechanized chair. We'll go ahead and call it the mechanized chair. And you can see you can still pull that look off, which going back to a point then I had mentioned about Baby Shredder, re-release Shredder with a more cartoon accurate colors and re-release Krang with this Krang inside the body. As fine and good as this one was right here, it definitely looks a lot better with this Krang, not only in the body of the android, but also in his little mechanized walker. Yeah, yeah, we'll go with mechanized walker. And in case you are curious, yes, you can go ahead and take the hands and just plug those in place as well. Works the exact same way, just with a slightly larger Krang. 
But I must admit, boy, that does definitely look a lot better than this one right here. And fine and good it was for its time, but getting an upgrade like this, I hope on some way down the road, some timeline of events, NECA Toys gives us another one of these cranks. So if you do have the original mechanized, I keep continuing to change the name of this, this walker that he's in, if they re-release this crank even just on his own, then you can swap it out for the one that you already had included inside, of course, this. So we'll go ahead and just pop this guy out. Just remove him. It's a little bit harder to get out because, of course, he's a little bit more bulbous. No offense, Krang. None taken, I hope. Let's go ahead and just pop his hands back in place on either side. Now, of course, being the fact that I've plugged this in place via ball joints kind of gives you an idea then of what kind of articulation this guy has. His arms, again, all the stuff that ball joints would afford you. The arms rotate all the way around, and yeah, you can move them back and forth. But man, that, oh man, that's a good-looking Krang. Again, giving you a closer look at the details on him. Really, really happy with how this one turned out. Now, this one, just to show you guys a comparison between the two, this one does have the hole on the bottom. And the reasoning why he has the hole on the bottom like this is he actually has to plug into a peg, a very large circular peg that's on the inside control area. This crank doesn't have it, but it happens to have a very similar shaped hole. So I'm wondering if maybe this guy wasn't originally planned to be the crank that was going to be inside his body before they ended up sculpting a much vastly superior crank, the one that we ended up getting right here. So we'll go ahead and put crank back in his body. You guys already know the details of how to do that already now. Again, you're just going to put your finger inside. All you really need to do is remove free one side of it. And sometimes I may find myself jumping back and forth until I get that sweet spot going. There we go. That was a lot easier. And when, literally, when you have one freed away from that little groove, then the whole thing very easily comes back off. Go ahead then and take Krang. Find that peg hole right there or that peg point and line it up with the hole and just plug, it in, plug him in. He gets a secure enough fitting. And if you play your cards right, you can actually get his arms attached around those little joysticks, kind of like what I've done on the one side right here. Then go ahead and go back to his body, fit it in on the angle. And when you get one side in, just like that, then go ahead and just pull this one away, pry it away. There you go. You're basically just widening the plastic just enough that it catches onto itself. And then once that's in place, just make sure, I have to do this actually a couple of times, but just line it up on the one side. Fit it in on the other side, giving me a little more problems than it was before, but just line everything up. There we go. There we go. And fit everything in. And then once everything is in place, then you can just lock those tabs in. The Krang isn't going to be going anywhere. And then you've got Krang all ready to control the Technodrome. Shifting our focus away from the brains of the operation now to the brawn of this relationship, let's check out the android body of Krang. Now, right from day one, when Nekatoys started putting out Cartoon Turtles, the very first thing on my list of, I really hope they could eventually get to this figure, was Android Body Krang. And now, finally seeing it in hand, being able to actually hold it in hand, it gives me exactly the kind of turtle toy I would want, giving us an Android Body Krang that looks very faithful to his cartoon counterpart. Up to this point, we had gotten ourselves a Playmates release of the Android Body of Krang, which was fine and good for its time. It went well with the kind of turtle toys that they were doing, but it really wasn't the most cartoon accurate. This, on the other hand, is definitely cartoon accurate. Uh, looking at the head sculpt, for example, or as close of a proximity to a head sculpt as it could possibly be, paint is pretty good on this guy, although... Right here around the nose, I can't tell whether that's paint that has found its way to the nose or if it's paint that has flaked off. I've got a little bit of extra paint here also around the visor and a little bit on the top there, but the rest of it remains generally pretty clean. Like with all the other cases of the Turtle cartoon figures, I do like the fact that we have all the details very boldly painted in in black. So you've got all these little, I don't know if I would call these flaps, but he's got these flaps on the front of his torso. His mouth, of course, sunken in and painted in in black. And even his double chin, which I don't want to draw too much attention to it, but he does have that also painted in a nice, dark, bold black line. Again, it's pretty good. Um, 
in a perfect world, yes, I would have been thrilled the idea that they could have actually had removable visors so that we could have actually got different expressions on his face. Of course, his mouth wouldn't necessarily change at all, but if we had more exaggerated looks on his eyes, but I think that's just more, I wish it could have had that, but I'm more than content with the actual end result figure that we got here. On the back, you've got little wrinkles on his elbows. I think that's a fun touch. He also has a little bit, a couple of wrinkles there on the top of his torso as well, and a nice dark black line where I guess his flap, his neck flap, is starting to develop there. He doesn't have it on the top here. He only seems to have it right here. And again, that's perfectly fine. He's always been a strange designed character and yet still manages to succeed, I feel, as a figure from NECA Toys. He's got the bright colors I would expect to see on the cartoon version of Crank. Carries over rather nicely here. So all like the reds, for example, on his hands and, of course, his lower under ruse just below Crank have all been painted in the same sort of color scheme I would expect to see from the cartoon. He's got all these additional squares here on the side. He's actually got ones here on the either side of his leg. And the same similar style of squares here on either side of his body. And I guess that is cartoon accurate, though I never really look at the armpit area of Krang. Uh, much like all the other turtle figures, you definitely have the very noticeable section where the back side is all shadowed or slightly darker. And as you get to the front, you've got the light, of course, hitting it. We're assuming the light is hitting it on this one side. So the front of his body is slightly lighter. Continuing our way down. Hello, Crank. Hi, how are you? He has these nice little chubby legs. Look at these adorable little chubby legs all the way down to these little tiny red shoes. In case you are curious, yes, he does have peg holes on the undersides of his feet. So if you are worried about maybe stability, he is a little on the top heavy side of things, obviously because of the design of the character. He's a little bit more smaller and squatter in the legs, a very broad torso. If you are somebody that worries about your Krang falling over, by all means, then make use of the display stand and use those peg holes provided on the undersides of his feet. Let's have a look at the articulation on Android body Krang. His head is on a ball joint, so you can rotate it quite comfortably, quite easily back and forth and up and also down as well. As for the arms, the arms hinge out. They don't quite clear a full 90 degree angle bend. And even if they did, the shoulders here are slightly softer plastic. So I guess technically, if you could pull off such a feat, his arm, his uh, shoulders would be soft enough that they would just move along with the joint. Um, the arms do, like I said, move forward and back. He does have a bend at the elbow, just a single hinged elbow. Hands rotate or the arms rotate back and forth and also his hands rotate all the way around and hinge back and forth. Now, keeping in mind, again, if you swap out these hands with any one of his other accessories, you really would only have just the straight swivel because after all, it's only just been pegged in place. You would be able to rotate any one of those weapons we looked at before. Now, for his waist, his waist does still swivel back and forth because they've attached it up top here and kept the bottom still attached to the course, the compartment where Krang is going to sit inside means that you still get the straight swivel on his waist. You can rotate that back and forth. Legs split out. There's the ball joints working behind the scenes there. The legs move forward, the legs move back. And yes, if you are curious, this whole lower torso is all soft plastic. He has a double hinge on the knee. There's one, there's two. And then when it comes to his feet, they move up and down, and you can also rock them back and forth. So despite his portly size, you can actually still get Krang quite movable. The question then, of course, becomes because he has short squatty legs and because he has little tiny feet, stability could, of course, be something that could be problematic with this guy. If you don't want your Krang to be toppling over anytime soon, definitely make use of a clear display stand that Nekatoys also puts out there, as it does fit appropriately with the peg holes on the undersides of Krang's android body. In the interest of final looks and not having him falling over, I did take my own personal advice and decided to use a display stand just in case, just in case, because I've got the arms up and because Krang is slightly top heavy, I certainly would not want to have him falling over in the middle of final looks. That would just be an absolute embarrassment. But it also gives me the opportunity as well, being that he does have so many swappable options available, to showcase what he could look like with the ball and chain in one hand and the laser blaster in the other. And because NECA Toys gave us so many different swappable options available, it means that you can decide to display Krang any which way that you want, except for the fact he doesn't have the wings. He never came included with the wings, which I guess makes more sense because I think the wings came out from his shoulders and it would just involve you having to yank an entire arm off. Using and swapping out just the hands makes a lot more sense. 
You know what also makes a lot of sense? Let me just throw this idea out there to NECA Toys if they just happen to be watching this. You already have this mold at your discretion. It's currently sitting in your inventory. And if you're thinking to yourself, I, I don't know what we could possibly do. What else could we do with this same mold? Perhaps going to the box right now and remembering the episode that Krang first got this Android body. Why not give us a quarter scale version of Krang? Literally just taking the one that we're looking at right here, right now, at this moment, and increase the size of him so that he's a towering looking behemoth Krang. I mean, again, you already have the inventory of these parts. You already have the mold. And of course, you want to get as much out of that mold as you possibly can. I was going to say shrink them up, but increase the size of Krang and give them a quarter scale release. I'm sure any turtle fan would love to be able to get a quarter scale sized Krang, especially if down the road, perhaps they start giving us vehicles like the turtle blimp, like the turtle van. Why not give us a giant Krang as well? Just throwing that out into the wind, seeing if anybody's going to catch it with a butterfly net. There you go. What do you guys think of this figure, by the way? I am thrilled, thrilled, and it's probably hard to really read this humble reviewer based on his voice, but I'm thrilled for the fact that we finally get ourselves an Android Krang. This, from day one, has been my must-have. If only NECA Toys could actually produce a figure based on this, Android Krang body was number one. Top of the list. And the fact that we finally now get it, I have to admit, he does look good. Smart idea also of having the swappable, or not so much swappable, but the removable mid-torso to allow you to get into there to be able to remove Krang. Instead of having to try to finagle him, pulling and yanking him from the front opening area, instead just have the top torso removable. It doesn't affect the figure at all. You still have all the same articulation as you had before. It's a lot easier than having to try to get Krang in there. You know it would just cause disastrous effects. So glad that they did the, they went the path that they went and they had it as a removable torso piece. Smart job, smart job in NECA Toys Apart. Quarter scale Krang, throwing it out there right now. Hashtag quarter scale Krang. Nobody's going to trend it. Nobody's going to trend it. What do you guys think of Android Body Krang? It's a pretty cool looking figure. Let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of it. And a big thank you again to the folks over at NECA Toys that provided the sample of the Wrath of Krang that we had a look at in this review. If you guys are new to the channel and liking all the content you're seeing, consider the idea of, of course, coming on board, being a part of this family, hitting that subscribe button down below, and one step further, move on over to the bell notification, turn that on, come back to this channel Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have a lot of hangout meet and greets. We have brisk. We have the occasional Rice Krispie Squares. There's a lot of fun going on, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And of course, keep your peepers peeled to this channel as there's going to be definitely a lot more NECA reviews lined up and coming your way. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.